So we've already looked at Tame Impala, we've already looked at Billie Eilish in this chord progression series. But today we're gonna keep that train rolling by looking at incredible indie pop artist, Lord. In this video, you're gonna learn so many cool things about Lord's chord progressions and how you can then apply them to your own songs. We're gonna talk about things like descending chord progressions. We're gonna talk about how to change keys mid song but actually make it sound really good. And we'll also talk about how Lord uses vocal stacks to create chords, often instead of using a piano or guitar. So we'll dive into all of that. So let's jump right in. Here are the top five chord progressions by Lord. All right, sliding into number five is Lord's song, Liability. Baby really hurt me, crying in the taxi. He don't want to know me, says he made the big mistake of dancing in my store. What do you notice about this chord progression? Well, first of all, it's very simple. Which again, as I always mention, I know I don't really care about that. I'm not worried about what's the most complex or the most difficult. I'm focusing on which chord progressions speak the most to me. And I don't know if you noticed it, but did you notice the descending line component of this progression? It is literally the bass line in this is going down the entirety of the major scale. It starts on the one, so we're in the key of D flat. Starts on the one chord. And it goes one, seven, six, five, four, three, two, then five back to one. And it restarts that. So it descends the whole way down that ladder. Now, as far as the chords themselves, again, we're in the key of D flat major. The one chord, again, if you don't know what I'm talking about with one chord, six chord, five chord, just download the free guide below the six essential chords in every key, and that'll get you up and running. So the one chord, and then it goes to, just a beautiful chord. Now, the way I like to conceptualize this is it's still a one chord, but it's with a major seven in the bass. So you could think of it as a one major seven chord, but the major seven note is in the bass here. And then it goes to the six minor and then down to the five. And now I'm notice how I'm sustaining this up here. It adds some nice color, this third note, third note of the major scale here. It sounds really nice. And then down to the four, Again, I'm sustaining that, that creates a major seven chord. And then down to the three minor, down to the two minor, back to the five, back to the one. Right, it's that type of thing. So my biggest takeaway from this progression is just the power of descending lines, but it's it's a bit more deep than that because why is it powerful? Why is a descending line powerful? Well, I think it's because of you're moving to a destination because what happens when you're playing just random chords, you're just moving around, but your ears aren't catching on to any type of pattern or movement that is heading in a particular direction versus when you implement this descending line technique, your ear catches on to that and it, your ear just by nature wants to follow it and it creates interest because now you are motivated because you now have a destination that you can feel you are moving to. Right, it just keeps moving in this direction and it hooks your ear because of that. So that is number five, the song Liability. They say you're a little much for me You're a liability You're a little much for me So they pull back All right, the number four chord progression by Lord is her song Solar Power. I hate the winter Can't stand the cold I tend to cancel all the plans I but when the heat comes, something takes a hold. Can I kick it? Yeah. So one thing Lord and I have in common is our love of the flat seven major chord. So that is the featured chord in this progression. So we're in the key of B major, and obviously it's played on guitar, but it's applicable across all instruments. Again, if you want to understand the basic pattern of it, 
then just download the 60 central chords in every key guide below and that applies to both guitar and piano and whatever other instruments you might be playing. So we're in the key of B and this chord progression starts on the one chord and then it goes to the flat seven major, then it goes to the four and back to the one. Very simple, but that again, that flat seven major is where you get all that color. So how do we get a flat seven major chord in any key, right? Cause this will apply to every key. You just need to understand the pattern and what's happening. So in the context of the major scale, just the do re mi, right? It is, you wanna look for the seventh note, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You make that note flat, right? It's a flat seven major, make that note flat. And now we just wanna build a major chord off of that. So though, you just want an A major chord. So we're going from the B major to the A major, just a beautiful transition there. And then the most natural res resolution, the most natural destination for a flat seven major chord is the four chord of the key that you're in. So in the key of B, the four chord, if you downloaded the chart, you'll see that it is the E chord. So one flat seven major resolves beautifully to the four chord. And then it just comes back to the one to finish off that progression. Yeah. My cheeks in that color over ripe peaches No shirt, no shoes, only my features My boy behind me, he's taking pictures Lead the boys and girls onto the beaches Come on, come on, tell you my secrets I'm kinda like a prettier Jesus Oh, that's beautiful Forget. That little vocal run is fantastic and be sure to stick around for number one, by the way, because we actually talk about how Lord creates chords using her vocals. And I'm gonna kind of weave that into this video at the very end. So that's number four, the song Solar Power. Moving on to number three, and this is Lord's song, Supercut. In my head, I play a supercut of us. All the magic we gave off, all the love we had and lost. And then this is another example of just a the most basic chord progression that made the list. Again, it made the list because this song speaks to me. I love this song. There's something about even the simplicity of it because the better you get at playing instruments, the harder it is to stay simple. The harder it becomes to uh, focus on what does this song want from me? And then you only do that and you don't do more than that. You don't, you keep it as minimal as the song is asking you to keep it. So this song is in the key of C major. And the key thing here is, you may have heard me talk about this before, it's the sustained note technique. Basically the sustained note technique is just, this is especially easy if you're starting on the one chord, which we are here. So in the key of, of C major, starting on the one chord, essentially what you're doing is you're sustaining, for the most part, the notes in your right hand, or at least some of the notes. So especially the one, the first, and the third. Because listen to what happens when I take this progression. It created a major seven chord automatically, but you didn't even have to think about going to a major seven chord. You just had to think about going from a one chord to a four chord, but you were like, but I'm just gonna keep these notes the same. And it's just beautiful because it creates that consistency uh, up in the higher registers while the bass, the lower registers are moving around with the bass and everything else. And what's great is it's actually easier to play this way and it sounds better because if you do, right, if you jump around like that, it's much less interesting and everything kind of feels disconnected. But when you do this, And then at the end of the bar, maybe you can kind of resolve it just a little bit, you know, by doing that or something. But the point remains that when you sustain certain notes and especially the third note of the major scale, third note of the major scale is just great because it just creates so many nice chords. So yeah, it's beautiful. The visions never stop. These ribbons wrap me up. And there's also that rhythmic component of the piano as well, right? So 
that's all we're doing there. It's going from the one to the four chord to the six chord to the four chord. But again, we're sustaining these notes up here and that just glues, it keeps everything glued together and keeps the vibe going. But when I reach for you, there's just a super cut. And one interesting thing that I'll mention here just randomly, just off the cuff here about the word vibe, I've, I keep noticing this. Do you notice how the, the piano is filtered out? Almost every time I hear the word vibe or even when I use the word vibe, when I hear a song, I'm like, oh man, that's vibey. It's almost always, almost always as a result of putting a filter on something. So you just hear that blanketed kind of underwater sound and that magically creates what we think of as vibe. It just creates this like energy by taking things away. You're not even adding anything. You're just taking things away. You're taking away those high frequencies and it creates this blanketed sound. And that, interestingly enough, creates what we usually think of as a vibe. Because when I play this, it's not very vibey, but if you put the filter on it, then it becomes vibey. So yeah, that's just a little interesting detail that I thought of just now and that I have observed uh, previously. All right, we're hitting the home stretch. Moving on to number two is Lord's song, Green Light. I do my makeup in somebody else's car. We order different drinks at the same bars. So there are two reasons why I included this song Green Light on this list. The first is just a subtle little simple timing thing that happens with this piano progression that it's just one little move, but it makes such a difference and it pulls you in and attracts you to the song. And the other one is a key change that happens mid song, but you almost don't even notice it's a key change. It's that natural. And I'm gonna show you what the intervals are and how to reliably change keys like this in the middle of a song, but not have it sound you know, completely out of left field. So the first thing, listen to the timing of these block chords on piano. I do my makeup in somebody else's car. It comes in just before that downbeat and it's just, it's beautiful. Now, the other thing that we're going to talk about is the key change that happens in the song. So we're starting off in the key of A major and it is the chord progression that we have so far is the six minor to the one to the four. Very basic. And then, but the key changes. Let me dance on the light of floor, on the light of floor, but I hear sound. In my mind. So the key change is there, but notice how it's not completely, again, out of left field. It's not like your ears adjust to it very easily, very smoothly, but yet it still has that really cool color to it. So what are we doing there? What is that transition? Well, again, we're starting in A major and it moves to the, the key of D major for this part of the song. So the pattern you can take away from this is whenever you want to change keys like this, the first place to start is go for the perfect fourth interval. Now, you don't even have to know that language. All you need to know is that based on the initial key you're in, find the four chord of that key, and that is the one chord of the new key. So in this case, A major, the four chord in A major is the D major chord. And D major now becomes your new key. In the key of D major, we introduce the four to the one to the five. Again, it's the four to the one to the five. Very simple. So that is chord progression number two on this list. Again, be sure to play around with the timing when you are playing, especially these very basic block chords. See if you can have just one chord do something a, a little different. Maybe hit a little earlier, hit a little late. Just something that can keep it from just sounding like that. Introduce, you know, just a little detail that shifts it that just deviates ever so slightly from what your ear is expecting. And then the other thing again, if you wanna change keys, just go to the four chord of your initial key and then make that your new key. All right, and finally, sliding in at number one, this one's gonna be super fun. This is Lord's song, The Love Club, but we're gonna do something a little different for this one, listen.
What do you notice about this? Well, it's just the vocal layers and the drums. Like, that's it. So the vocals themselves are creating the chords. And we're talking about chords, so I'm gonna take the liberty to include this in my favorite chord progressions by Lord because it's beautiful. And this is where sort of production meets chord creation or chord progressions, right? So what I'm gonna do is I did a little sort of recreation or version of this. I didn't try to make it exactly the same, but I did create it. So I'm gonna open that now and let's dive into that. All right, so I got my little session here. Here's what it sounds like. Obviously, it doesn't sound as good as Lord's version, but that's not really the point. We're just trying to learn here. Plus, I haven't really implemented this technique much at all. So I'm still learning on the job here and we're just learning this together. So let me walk you through kind of how I came up with this. The first thing is, as you can see, I've got things color coded here. These three tracks, they're recording the same thing, but I recorded three different takes. And then we have a harmony here. Now, we'll talk about that little rhythmic effect here in a minute, but then there's one more harmony track that comes in, and that's just a lower harmony. So, what you want to focus on in the recording aspect of it is record multiple takes, especially of uh, your main lead melody, your, your main note that your ear latches onto and hears the most, and then record at least three, although you can definitely do more. I kept it pretty conservative because I'm just trying to illustrate what goes into it, but you can... Uh, absolutely become a bit more multiple in what you're trying to accomplish here. And that can create an even bigger and lusher sound. Is lusher a word? I have no idea. But anyway, so that is what's happening there in the recording side of things. Now let's come into the mix window. So we've got these five tracks that we just talked about. These are all being sent to this vocals bus right here, and I've got some plugins on there as you can see. But on the individual tracks, we've got auto-tune on each one, which is kind of breaking a rule, but that's okay because for this sound, you it's almost like you want it to sound like a vocoder without actually using a vocoder because a vocoder would sound too electronic and synthy, but you still want it to be very tight uh, when it comes to the pitch of these notes. So that's why I put a bit of auto-tune on here. It's nothing crazy. Uh, but it does help the overall, it helps maintain that pop atmosphere to the song. And notice how on just a couple of these tracks, I have Micro Shift, which is sort of like a chorus, doubler, stereo width type of plugin. Why did I put this on just a couple of the individual tracks, but not on the bus channel, right? Because we're sending all these to this bus channel. Well, I don't really like using doublers or choruses or flangers on a bus channel with multiple vocal takes. I just very rarely like the sound that comes out of that. So a little compromise, you can meet this halfway, is just put a plugin, a stereo width type of plugin, on one, two, or three of the individual tracks that you want to perhaps uh, put in the spotlight or to create a bit of a different color so that the vocal tracks aren't all in exactly the same lane, if you will. Right, so there. Now, if I turn on the micro shift, by turning on micro shift on a couple of these tracks, it created a bit more color and swimming and gluing together of all the different tracks. And I just liked the way it sounded. I experimented and that is what sounded the best to me. Now, I'll just very quickly run through what is happening here. Uh, let's come to this bus channel. I'm gonna turn all the plugins off and we'll go one by one. JJP vocals. So this just adds some compression, some bite, just to get things started, just to get some processing started, very simple. Next thing is OTT, a bit of compression, kind of glue everything together. And I got the depth at only about 17%. The next thing is Kickstart. Now Kickstart is interesting because this is just a sidechain plugin and I have this automated. That's why you get that swelling in, right? It's because of kickstart here. So that is a key component, I would say, when you're going for this type of vocal stacked or vocal pad sound where you're layering in harmonies to create almost an instrument in of itself, and often this will replace like a guitar or a piano, it using these types of LFO, like 
Example, the LFO tool, I don't have that plugin, but I know that plugin is fantastic for doing these types of things. So that was one of the things I did is I used Kickstart to create a bit of that swell. And then I just experimented with RC20. Uh, I went with a preset, I turned off the noise and I just went with a bit of this distortion and then the filter on this. <laughs> because I wanted to warm it up, give it a bit more of a blanketed sound so it's not so bright and crispy. And then I put Tricomp on here. This is like Studio One's version of OTT. And then finally, just a little bit of EQ to have it fit better. It just sounded better to me. And then finally, this little plugin here. Again, you can do this with plugins like LFO Tool or check out whatever plugins you have inside of your DAW. In this case, in Studio One, there's this plugin called Extreme. And this is where you get this sound. And I have this automated. So I only have this active during that last little line. And this is just a preset. I started with two peaks and then I, you know, edited it, edited it from there, made some adjustments. And I thought it sounded really cool. It added that nice bit of spice to this. And then uh, finally, I'm sending this to a reverb track that we have on a return track. Very simple, nothing crazy happening. So that is my favorite chord progression by Lord. It is using the vocal and layering in vocals to create the chord progression almost again as it's um, almost like an autonomous instrument instead of a guitar or a piano or a synth. You're using that instead. All right, my friend, thank you so much for watching this video. Now, I know I've mentioned it a couple times throughout, but I do have my free six essential chords in every key guide. If you wanna kinda get up to speed on the numbers that I was talking about, like what is the one chord, the six chord, and how does that apply across all the different keys, this is gonna really give you some clarity. So be sure to download that, it's 100% free, and I'll leave a link in the description below. So thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Bye.